Good morning all, warm regards from Kasuba Hospital Manipal. When we do PCI of chronic total occlusions, what do the evidence tell us? Can we do it? We are going to discuss about open CTO, progress CTO and decision CTO. Euro CTO I will not discuss because my previous speaker has already discussed it in detail. CTO, more than three months, total occlusions, is a reflection of advanced atherosclerosis. Patients have probably higher incidence of diabetes, hypertension, multivessel CAD, peripheral arterial disease, cerebrovascular disease, lower ejection, and hence overall worse prognosis. So what do we uh, think when we want to do a PCI in CTO? We have to look at the benefits in terms of improved angina, exercise capacity, quality of life, and maybe improvement in ejection fraction, as against the risk of emergency CABG, MI, tamponade, renal failure, stroke, vascular access complications, and radiation injury. The Open CTO Registry was published in 2017 in Jack Intervention, and it was basically investigator in initiated multi-center prospective observational study in about 12 year centers. The operators were quite experienced with both ND grade and retrograde approach, and the follow-up was basically telephonic. The baseline patient characters were like this. The main indication was symptom relief and appropriateness use criteria was followed. These were the angiographic characters and they were quite comparable. Procedure details also were comparable. The first strategy and second strategy were mainly anti grade either in terms of viral escalation or dissection re-entry and it was successful in about 40% of cases. In hospital complication were there, death in about 9 per people, less than 1%, MI, stroke, emergency surgery, and of course perforation along with requirement of blood transfusion, some hematoma, and kidney injury. These were the patient lesion and procedure characteristics, the comparison of health status improvement. Basic take home message included a high success rate of 86%. Major complication rates were quite higher than for PCI of non-CTO lesions. There were improvement in patient reported health status. Observed mortality rate was similar to other high risk interventions. Traditionally, mortality prediction scores exclude CTO lesions. Perforations were observed in about 8.8%. .8%. Perforation, tamponade and death occurred in equal frequency among CABG and non-CABG patients. So some believe that pericardium is adherent and protective after CABG, it's not so. The progress CTO, over 3,000 patients, multi-center, prospective from 2012 to 2016, various centers in US, technical success rate of 90%, major complications of 2.7%, main successful technique was ND grade, the negative Predictive factors for a success included poor cap visualization or absence of clearly tapered stump, absence of interventional collaterals, two bends of more than 70 degrees or one bend of more than 90 degree, circumflex occlusions, and in comparison with retrograde and anti-grade outcomes, retrograde had a good success rate of 80% or more. However, it was not as good as anti grade success rate which was more than 90%. The chances of complications were much higher with retrograde attempts. Maze was definitely high and risk of perforation and pericardiosynthesis was much higher when retrograde attempts were made. In terms of predicting the success for a retrograde, prior CABG and RCA or circumflex occlusions as against LAD occlusion and smoking were predictors of failure. Approaches to RCA CTO, one interesting point was if the lesion was proximal RCA, then the chances of retrograde success was better and as the lesion moved more and more distally to mid and distal RCA, the chances of retrograde success came down and the chances of anti grade success came, improved. IVERS was used mainly for stent optimization and side branch loss was a very important feature. It happened in 25% of patients and there was higher cardiovascular mortality whenever we lost a side branch. So in conclusion, technical success about 90%, major complications about 3%, mortality about 0.6%, most successful strategy was ND grade, worse outcome for circumflex, and no significant impact of prior failure on success with experienced operators. Retrograde technique was more successful in case of uh, ambiguous proximal cap and interventional collaterals, 
retrograde technique had more complications and maze. Decision CTO was done by SJ Park in Korea, optimal medical therapy with or without stenting for coronary CTOs. The goal was to assess safety and efficacy of CTO PCI compared with optimal medical therapy. For about 400 patients were randomized to either group and PCI had to be completed within 30 days of randomization. All patients were given guideline derived optimal medical therapy. Inclusion. As expected, three months of occlusion, diameter more than 2.5 mm, and silent ischemia, angina, or ACS. Exclusion criteria standard statistical analysis plan assumed a sample size of 1,200 patients with a dropout of 5%. In case of failed CTO PCI, additional attempts were allowed within 30 days after the index procedure. Revascularization of all significant non CTO lesions within a vessel diameter of more than 2.5 mm was done prior to randomization. All patients received optimal medical therapy. Other risk modifications including blood pressure and diabetic control were done. On three year follow up, composite of death, MI, stroke and repeat revascularization was done. Because of slower than anticipated enrollment, data and safety monitoring board stopped the study in advance. This was the study flow. It is important to note that 72 out of the 300 10 treated with optimal medical therapy, 72 patients crossed over to PCI arm. The baseline characters in terms of patient profile and angiographic features were comparable. Medications were standard. Primary endpoints were we had two closed worms. The limitation of the study was basically 20% crossover to CTO PCI from optimal medical therapy group. High prevalence of non-CTO lesions treated after randomization even on mild baseline symptoms, suboptimal primary endpoint, inappropriate design, and low power. However, it was the first randomized clinical trial to compare the strategy of optimal medical therapy alone with that of PCI in patients with CTO. Intention to treat analysis showed that optimal medical therapy as an initial strategy was non-inferior to PCI with respect to the primary endpoint at three years. Measures of health-related quality of life in the medical therapy group and the PCI group were comparable. It suggested in the end that medical therapy could be a reasonable, reasonable initial treatment strategy for CTO compared with PCI. Now, if you compare Euro CTO versus decision CTO, quality of life was a primary endpoint in Euro CTO. Enrollment after non CTO lesions were successfully recanalized was done, that is a good thing. And due to slow enrollment, the study ended after randomizing 400 patients. 7.3% of the medical therapy only group crossed over to CTO PCI. Statistically significant improvement with CTO PCI in one of the five components of the questionnaire. These are some of the randomized controls trials done. In conclusion, CTO PCI has a learning curve. Risk benefit analysis is a must to decide whether or not to attempt CTO. Use of CTO scores and technology has improved success to over 90%. Evidence is evolving. No randomized control trials have yet conclusively proven superiority of an initial CTO PCA strategy over optimal medical therapy. Randomized controlled trials are the gold standard for evidence, but only 15% of the ACC AHA guideline recommendations are based on level A evidence. CTO PCI is probably reasonable for patients with residual ischemia after revascularization of all non CTO lesions and despite optimal medical therapy based on available, but sometimes we may have to do better case selection. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.